13 years into a couple wars, there's some ramifications of that. And what does that mean? And what does it mean to serve? And what does it mean to support the troops? And what, what are the after effects of sending so many great dudes into combat for so long? And if you're expecting a, a sob story, you're, you're not going to get it. So we'll, we'll get going. So I joined up after 9-11 because of 9-11. The, the one and only reason, there was no other impetus for my desire to join. And I, I was angry. I was angry when the towers fell. I was angry when the Pentagon got hit. I was angry when the, the fl Flight 93 crashed in Pennsylvania. And I didn't come from a military family at all, so it took me just a little bit to, to figure out what that meant, you know? And it, as a visceral reaction, you know, I needed to serve our country. And yet it still took a little bit to, to make that decision. So, you know, part of what we do here at War Stories and Free Beer is, is build a bridge between the military and the civilian world. And of all the people that can relate to never having served, it, it would be me. Because without 9-11, I never would have served. And so, you know, I would have been the person who wanted to learn more from the people that had been there and done that. And, you know, when, when Mike Spann died, first American casualty, you know, that was the mission that I wanted. I wanted to be the tip of the tip of the tip of the spear. And, you know, it took me a while to figure out what that meant, but I knew where I wanted it to start eventually. And I wanted it to start there. <laughs> That's what I wanted to be. John Wayne, Sylvester Stallone, Jason Bourne. Who doesn't want to do that? Right? That's what, I, that's what I wanted to do. And I didn't have any idea what that really meant. So, you know, I just threw myself to the wolves and said, hey, I'll figure it out. And many a brave soul have said that, and good on everyone that ever did. Especially if you were serving something greater than yourself. And if, if it's something greater than yourself like America, it's pretty easy to, to say, hey, sign me up, you know, send me. So a couple years after I enlisted and made it through all of my training, you know, eventually if you pass and you keep passing and you pass and you keep passing, they, they give you something great. And what I got was membership into the Special Forces Regiment. And by that, I mean I, I earned my Green Beret. And this is one of my crowning moments in life. I mean, I was king of the world. And if you've graduated a Green Beret, you know exactly where that is. Because it's, everyone passes through that, that auditorium. And, you know, I was married at the time. I'm not married anymore. And it was, it was a very naive moment for me, you know. Life was great. It was just up here. Right? It was up here. <laughs> right? And, you know, there was a lot of preparation that went in, both mentally and physically. And the mental part was, was harder. Because the, the preparation for war is, is a mental preparation. The physical stuff is relatively easy. And so if you, you know, it's, it's not a natural thing to know that you're going to go into an environment that's lethal and that you're training whatever it is, no matter how great, and uh, the training that goes into a Green Beret is great. No matter how great that training, you still have to face that journey on your own, no matter what. So this was great. My whole family was there. You know, we, we smiled and we went to dinner and we did all that type of fun stuff. And yet, War was, was lingering in the future. And before war, there was the goodbye. And, and that's what it looked like. That was uh, a picture of Java from back in the day. That's at the Dulles Airport. Because there's a, there's a personal side to it, right? You see the guys, and they're, they're leaving, and they're getting deployed. And, you know, it's 
say, oh, yeah, that's, that probably sucks. Like, yeah, no, not probably. It does suck, right? I hate goodbyes. And they're, they're really hard and they take their toll. And they've taken their toll on a lot of people that have, that have gone over. And, you know, there's a lot of effects that come with that. But, you know, the, the mission matters. And when, when you go over and you have to deal with what war is, it's, it's not the goodbye that you said. The war that you have to deal with is, is what you have to do. And this picture right here, it, it you know, I, I think there is a divide between the civilian and the military world in America. I think Gorux, one of our main tenets is to, to build a bridge between that, those two worlds, right? However, if you've never gone down a road staring over that, you kind of don't know what it's like. I mean, I wasn't the guy that was meant to do this until the towers fell. And so it's, it's a personal journey and you face it. And the, the personal part of it is that you overcome a fear of death. And you basically say, you know, if it's my time, it's my time. I've got a mission to do. And there's, there's a power to that. And that's why you've got a bunch of our guys who have, who have served in special operations. And you've got me standing up here with, with the dog in my left hand, right, who's passed out. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it's a personal journey, though to go through that, and everyone has to do it. And, and you make peace with that. <laughs> Everyone's going to die someday. It just really, it, it matters how you live. And what my time in Special Forces was summed up by was the guys that I served with and the greater mission. And the greater mission was America. And, and America is full of Americans, by the way. And I love you all. And so that was the mission. And, and it was hard. That's not an easy. First time you do it, it's not easy. The 10th the time you do it, it's a whole lot easier. You get used to a lot of things. Special Forces is a really special place to work. And I owe my life to those guys and, and to guys like them because it's a brotherhood that passes on the knowledge. Each generation learns how to do things and then through the training process, which for me was over two years, I learned from the people who had invaded Afghanistan right after 9-11, and they taught me how to stay alive. And then I passed through the training, and I showed up on my team, and <laughs> the guys that were there were not really nice, even after I had my Green Beret, and it was awesome, right? <laughs> awesome for me. I was the new guy, and I didn't know anything. They'd been back and forth to war so many times they couldn't even count anymore. And, and yet, I needed them and they needed me. And so they taught me how to stay alive. And so, war is about people. It's about the mission. The mission is America. But ultimately, it's about the people next to you. And these are some of those people. This is actually at the birthplace of Abraham in Iraq, which is a beautiful country. I hope it stabilizes someday and you can all visit it. Because it's, there's beautiful parts to it. Garden of Eden type stuff. Of biblical proportions. And, you know, war is torn it apart. And, and war is bad. And yet, as long as we're human, it, it's going to exist. And, you know, that's just, that's just a fact. So war takes its toll, and, and you know, there are costs to it. And, and all of us, to get up here and, you know, you can tell there's a lot of funny stories, and there's a lot of boredom, and there's a lot of pure excitement. I mean, war is easy. It's very clear. Do this. Take that hill. Destroy this building. Defeat the enemy. It's really easy. 
really easy. And all of us is, ha have lost something from it, whether it's buddies or, or innocence or you name it. The transition after war is also full of loss. And so, you know, everyone has their personal journey to, to deal with in, in that regard as well. You know, the build up to war was to overcome the fear of death. And, you know, every single day of my life is, is a gift. It's a gift. I mean, I got a lot of buddies that are blown up, I got a lot of buddies that are dead. We all do. Just that's part of being in this community. And the transition is also hard. Personally, it takes its toll. You know, I lost a, I lost a marriage. I lost, when I got out, I lost a job. I lost some of the brotherhood. I lost just the day-to-day -day routine of what made me happy when I was in Special Forces. And you lose that. And, and then it's kind of like, all right, well, what do I do? And so there's a lot of talk about PTSD. And what is PTSD? And, and at, its, at its core, it's a loss of identity. My identity was the team I served on. My identity was the Special Forces Regiment in which I served. My identity was the missions that I went on to serve Americans. And it's not really more complicated than that. There's a couple examples of things in our society which create more divisions than anything else. Call it PTSD, PTSI, because I believe it's an injury, not a disorder, right? They say, they paint the military in, in not a great light for me. And so here's a good one. PTSD, it's post-traumatic stress disorder. Disorder implies that it's not treatable. Disorder implies that it's AIDS or cancer or you name it. You have it or you don't. And, and when you have it, you're just going to die. You're doomed to some horrible fate, and you're just going to die. We might as well put you off in the leper colony, because you're useless to America. And to me, Hurt Locker is one of the most damaging things that I've seen for my generation of warfighters. There is a... Who's seen Hurt Locker? All right, so I'll give you a brief summary. He is a bomb disposal guy in Iraq, right? His job is to take the most dangerous missions, and it's horrible, the most, the most horrible missions to go dispose of bombs as they arise. And they're, it's very dangerous, and it's really bad, really bad. And he does a great job. You know, he's portrayed as a hero of sorts. He's a protagonist. And when you win best picture, and a lot of reputable places say, hey, that's a, a near flawless movie, then we have a problem. And the problem is, is that the conclusions are wrong. Is war tough? Yes. Are the transitions tougher? Yes, they are. And yet, if you're going to portray this guy as the ambassador for my generation of warfighters, then I've got a problem with you. Because saying that, hey, war is a drug, and all you need is war to be at home again, and when you come home to America, you, you're, you're staring at cereal, and you can't decide, right? You're useless to America on the home front. And that's essentially, when you boil it down, <laughs> all the best lies are 99% truth. Welcome to Hurt Locker. 
So we're going to take it up a notch, and it's going to be a lot more positive. All right? I mean, a, a bunch of you know them. That's, that's Java. And that's from 2010. And so as I was getting out, I got out in 2008, and I suffered from, hey, the world's not quite right. You know? It was tough. There's no other way to say it. And this is a natural thing. Getting out of the military, which is so clearly, it's, it's, war is easy. Go do this. Serve the guy next to you. Easy. Done. Mission success. Got it. Right? Getting out was a little bit harder. I had that loss of identity. I lost the, the main support structures in my life. I lost almost all the support structures in my life. And what I didn't lose, though, was, was Java. And so here I am, some big barrel-chested, freedom-fighting Green Beret, right? And I'll just say that as a Green Beret, I served with some of, if not the most, elite soldiers that have ever walked the face of the earth. And here I am, and, uh, and I can't quite get it right back in America. It's, it's a humbling experience. And so, for me, you know, I was back and I didn't have a lot of things going for me, but I had a dog. And his name was Java. And so, you know, really that was my transition, which kind of moved me into the go rock stage of my life. And, you know, I think there's a lot of guys out there, a lot of guys and gals out there who are, who are going through something. It's not easy. And so it's also, there's a stigma attached to saying, hey, you know, things aren't quite right for me. You're expected to be great. You're expected to be a man. You're expected to be, you're expected to be able to solve all the problems that, that present themselves to you. And when those problems are different than something that is as easy as war, it's hard. It's different. It's change. You lose things. You don't quite have the training for that like you do to hop in gun trucks and, and run out and achieve mission success. So it's hard. And for me, it took a dog. For other people, it might take other things. For other war vets, it might take talking to somebody. It might take a lot of different things. But here's the thing. War vets don't need sympathy. They need jobs. They need a mission they can believe in. They need a community that supports them and that they can support. Something that they can believe in. And so, this is what has worked about GORUCK. And, and in that transition, you know, we say we're building better Americans because we are. And right here you've got Garrett, right, Dookie. <laughs> and then you've got a bunch of Americans right here. An American is a state of mind, by the way. It's a state of mind. It's not just where you're born. It's not just an entitlement. It's a state of mind to just be better, to go above and beyond, to think about yourself a little bit less and America or the mission a little bit more, to think about other people a little bit more. And, and that's what this symbolizes for me. And as I made the transition into the civilian world, you know, I owe everything to the Special Forces community. I owe everything to both my training and to the guys that taught me what it meant to, to do the mission the way that a Green Beret should do the mission, the way that a team of Green Berets should do the mission. And so, as that transition has borne itself out through GORUCK, 
what we say is that we're building a bridge between the civilian and the military worlds. And you've got a military guy there with a lot of experience. And he's passing it on to Americans. And that's why we're building better Americans. And we're 13 years into two wars. Seems like a long time. And you've got roughly 2.5 million people that have deployed to either Iraq or Afghanistan. That's a lot. That's a lot. And the home front is the focus for a lot of us, for most of us now. There's very little war fighting going on, and we're taking a lot of pride in what we're doing here. We still have brothers like Dan who are on the rotation schedule. They're just, man, they just don't stop going to Afghanistan. But there's a bunch of us that are here, and the goal is to give back here and to use what we've learned here and to build a bridge between the civilian and the military worlds here. And there's a lot of us, and we're doing it. Those to whom much is given, much is expected, was at, at the top of the first counseling that I ever got when I showed up in, in Special Forces. And what GORUCK's been able to do is to steal all of the, all of the great things and if we haven't stolen the great things from the Special Forces community, we're, we're gunning for them, right? We'll get there. Because there's so much to be learned from that community and by that community and with that community. And our goal is to build better Americans out of the knowledge that we have. So a lot of people say, how can I support and what can I do? The main thing to remember, to take it up a notch, is that you've got a lot of guys that have given a lot. Personally, physically, mentally, whatever the case may be. And the reason why we, why we fought and why guys are still fighting is for America and, and what we represent. And oh, by the way, America is full of Americans, and that means you. And, and so, you know, you fight for freedom, and you fight for ideals that you believe in, and you fight for the guys next to you. And so people want to say, hey, what can I do to support that? And at, <laughs> if you go out and, and every day you live your life to its fullest, then you're living out the intent of why we fight. So go out and live every day of your life to its fullest. And thanks for coming out to War Stories and Free Beer.